Hi, my name is Kat. I'm a California CPA and in this video I'll show you how to enter a Schedule C in ATX tax software. Let's start. Uh, so it's not straightforward where to enter anything in ATX, but eventually when you get too used to ATX it's not as difficult. So what I usually do, I go to Form 1040 and as I know where Schedule C goes, you kind of just open the schedule where it's supposed to go, like schedule one, uh, line three for business income. And you just, I just usually go to jump to link field and that will take me to schedule C entry. And as you can see on the left side, it will show up right here. So here you go. So we enter, uh, so we can choose if it's a for filer or for a spouse. Uh, then if the business is LLC, you can check it here. All these things that like usually we need if it's QBI or not. Uh, so we'll start with principal business or idea. Let's do consulting for a client. And let's say he doesn't have a business activity code. We can just press here and enter it or choose a category. So let's say for... Um, Consulting will be professional scientific and it will be, I don't know, maybe he's doing accounting or something. Let's say tax preparation services. Awesome. Uh, so, so usually the way ATX structure, it's kind of like under Schedule C section, we'll have a first and second pages that will be actual form. And then it will be all kind of things all kind of entry pages. So if you have to enter vehicle information like miles and any vehicle expenses, we can enter it here. Then some of the lines we enter separately and some of them we enter um, we enter on, on, on the form. So for example, like all this like more like bluish fields, we can just enter it here and everything else we enter elsewhere. So like here under data. Uh, so like I will pretend I will for this that it doesn't have EIN. Address will be the same as on 1040. Uh, it's a cash basis. Did you materially participate it? No. Um, if you started as a client started the business in 2021, that's where we check that. Let's say he did. For uh, 1099 question, if he required, did he make any payments? Let's say yes. Did he file any 1099s? Let's do yes. And here's other questions that might be relevant or not. And then we just, that's kind of like when we enter, where we enter general information. And like I said, then we go to this form and like we can enter certain things here, like advertisement, like let's say hundred bucks, uh, any expenses, that are in blue we can just enter it here so once or not we can just go to jump to link field and will take us to the field where we can enter information so let's do that for gross receipts gross receipts for sale not reported on 1099s and if they are reported on 1099s it will take us to report uh, filled up 1099 form it's like technically not required, but that's like a very useful field because it will just summarize all 1099s for us. Um, so let's go back to 1099. And let's see what is interesting here. If there's any other income, it's 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 actually great because it gives us like some um, examples for other income. So we can just enter them here or let's enter, enter just other income. I, like I already talked about vehicle expenses, employees, uh, benefits, interest expense, rent and lease. We can enter separately uh, if it's uh, equipment or if it's uh, other business property. Uh, taxes can be entered by category. So it's really nice. It's actually a really nice summary in here. Travel expenses, um, for meals and entertainments, it has a separate sections for wages. Let's see, business use of home. Okay, cool, that's where we kind of like, I don't think that's where we enter it, but that's when the summary comes. Enter data on home office worksheet. Okay, cool, so that's where we should go. 
three slots carryovers if there's any pre previous for schedule c uh other expenses so it's it's pretty neat it's pretty good entry fields and if you do need to enter um business use of home we can just do the same jump to input link and it will take us to this it will create a new worksheet like right here and we'll start with entering address and then we'll enter like um, square feet for business versus total um, and then we enter all expenses related to it so actually it's just like really interesting how it works it just takes us to different fields uh so let's see another one i just want to add is depreciation so we can just go here and we have to choose this add new form for fixed assets so now on the left side we'll have a fixed asset entry and we enter assets here so let's say let's just pretend it's asset one place in service this year and here we can choose if it belongs to schedule c or if it belongs to like any other schedule category let's say it's furniture equipment subcategory let's say it's a computer new assets sure if it's a partially used for business we can choose it here and basically we enter cost let's say it's 100 bucks and it kind of fills up all the things for us which we can update if needed if we had a prior um, if it's from prior year we can enter a prior year accumulation uh, depreciation here a current year um, depreciation so yeah so after we're done entering and i'm sorry i'll just interrupt for a second we can add new assets here or delete new assets here or move them to different categories so all these things are here it's pretty good entry actually so after we're done we just do save and now let's go back to schedule c and see if it's like here you go now depreciation is here so i think that should cover basics for how to enter schedule c i hope that was helpful and thanks for watching my video I hope you found my video helpful. Uh, if you want to learn more about me and what I do, please go to my website remotecpainla.com and please subscribe to my channel. It means still a lot to me when people comment or subscribe to my channel. That makes me want to continue and record more videos. Thank you and have a great day. Talk to you soon. Bye.